Tom Clark's main event is a Boink Studios production. Follow us on Twitter at Boink Studios and check out our Facebook page where you can see all of our projects, past, present, and future. And now, on with the show. This is Daddy's show. Step off. <laughs> Hey, hey! What is up? Welcome to the program, folks. Thank you for tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tom Clark, and you are listening to Tom Clark's Main Event. This is episode number 64 of the podcast, and if you're joining us today for the very first time, we will bid you welcome. If you're coming back for a repeat visit, we say, hey, thanks for checking back in with us. And to all those involved, we extend to you, as always, the customary laurel and a hearty handshake. Thanks for listening. Thanks for reading. Thanks for supporting. And hey, thanks for always being there, Doc. Episode number 64. You'll have to excuse me. My mouth is uh, salivating at the moment um, because I am enjoying a nice piping hot cup of coffee. And it tends to, uh, um, you know, get me hydrated uh, and and get my mouth really going. I don't know where I'm going with that. But anyway, so if you hear me doing that and this quite a bit, then you know that's what it is. Um, I can only edit as much of this stuff out. Uh, So, uh, hey, hey, what's up? By the way, I'm Tom. This is my show. Welcome aboard. Glad you are with us. Did you miss us? Because we sh... Sure as heck fire missed you. It's a Groundhog Day reference. There you go. So, I didn't really have a topic this time out, as you can tell by the name of this particular episode. And yeah, I, I if you're going to accuse me of going all gimmicky with the title of the show, guilty. I, I went gimmicky with it. This is the RWO, the Random Wrestling Observations. <laughs> ah, it's terrible, isn't it? I mean, not only has that gimmick been ripped off, you know, a billion times, but here I am adding, you know, more fuel to the fire, I suppose. It's ridiculous. It's sad, too, actually. But, you know, it is what it is. So, how are we doing, man? Um, as I said, I I, uh, uh, I do want to welcome you guys back. Happy that this is number 64. And, of course, when I discovered that it was number 64... The first thing I thought of was the Beatles song, because I'm a massive Beatle maniac. Always have been. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, uh, when I'm 64. Will you still need me? When you, will you still feed me when I'm 64? Easy for me to say, right? So, I, as I said, man, I, I wanted to record, but I didn't really have like a... And I usually just pick a main event topic, and I just kind of set it in stone and, and roll with it. But I've just got some stuff on my mind, and I wanted to you know, have a conversation and with you guys and, and talk about some things, and that's what I'm going to do. So the main event for this time around is Random Wrestling Observations with yours truly. So let's talk about what I'm doing right now. I am currently watching um, the first ever um, War Games, The Match Beyond. And yes, it's available on the WWE Network. Yes, it is. And I've I've been a big advocate for WB Network. Uh, I'm an original subscriber. I'm an OS. I I don't I guess sure okay. So yeah, I've sus- I subscribe within a day. I think it was I was on the first day. And uh, I've been a big av- big advocate of WB Network ever since. They've got so much programming. They're adding so much more programming as time goes on, and it's allowing me to enjoy this classic match, which I actually remember taking place to begin with. Um, classic stuff. I mean, you guys know me. I'm old school. And it's not much of a segue, but let me segue, if I may, from the old school mentality into a couple things I've been checking out lately. One of them is the the back-to-back podcast episodes recorded between CM Punk and Colt Cabana. Now, these are a couple of years old now, so I've listened to them multiple times. When Punk did Cabana's show, he uh, and he didn't want it to be a shoot. Um, he didn't want it to be him bashing WWE. 
but he did shed a lot of light on a lot of negative stuff that was done to him and around him and involving him. And, you know, you can hate punk if you want to. You can think he's this. You can think he's that. You can call him greedy and selfish and self-centered. And, you know, he complained, he whined, whatever you want to say about him. Everything's been said about the guy. And, and no, to answer your question, he's not in the news right now. But it just, it just got me thinking. See, I'm, I am all about the business. And I always have been. If I'm not watching pro wrestling at home on TV, I'm watching it on my phone. And if I can't watch on my phone, say I'm driving, then I've got something in my ears. I've got something in the sound system of the car, and it's pro wrestling related. Sometimes I'll put on a podcast, JR's podcast or Austin's podcast. Sometimes I listen to my own, not merely for vanity's sake, but for the sake of getting better and improving and seeing how I sound and, you know, trying to think of what I can think of to make the quality of the show better and to you know, to add more to it and make it more enjoyable for you guys. And for the past couple of days, I put on Cabana's podcast in which Punk, uh, you know, delivered the original, I can't call it a promo and it's not a shoot, it's not a shoot interview. I don't, I just didn't see it being that way. When he told his story, as it were, told his side of the story. And that's what I did. And I've been listening to it. Um, and I'll be honest with you, the more I listen to it, the more frustrated I get. (laughs) Cause here's the thing, man, as a, as a WB featured columnist online, I write about this company a lot. I mean to tell you a lot. Okay. It's, I do it all the time. And, you know, Sometimes when you get that close to the topic that you're writing about, there are moments that, you know, you're writing about this stuff and you're like, you you can't distance yourself. You can't separate yourself from what you're writing about. It's extremely difficult. And um, I I try not to do that, but, you know, because it's my job to remain unbiased. Yes, I, I write opinion driven columns, but I have to do it in. Not a neutral voice, but a voice that allows me to look at every side of the equation. To consider the possibility that I'm wrong. And to consider the possibility that I'm right. And that's how I, that's how I've always written my stuff. And anyone that knows me can tell you that. Um, it took a few years for me to polish that, that voice and to get that voice where I wanted it to be. But that's how I write. And you might find a little bit of distinction between how I sound on Bleach Report versus how I sound on Sports Kita versus how I sound on Camel Clutch. But, you know, the fact is, I do try to keep it... Middle of the road maybe is not the right... And that's a pro wrestling term, by the way, but... Ride the fence, perhaps. But, I I mean, I, I do give you my opinion, but as I said, I try to temper it with facts and I try to temper it with other viewpoints and other ideas and opinions. But having said all that, there are moments when I do become a little bit too attached to WWE, and it tends to sort of cloud your judgment. There are moments when you kind of feel like that they can do no wrong because you're such a fan, and I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm innocent of that, that I'm I'm so smart. Oh, but I'm such a smart writer, guys, that I never allow myself to do that. <laughs> That's not the case. I'm human. Uh, I'm allowed to be affected, and... Sometimes my judgment is extremely good. Sometimes my judgment sucks. And it just depends on the situation, on what I'm writing about. And it's that way in life, really. You know what I mean? So, you know, when you really think about these things and try to and try to sit down and look at it, when I do, I, I, I can admit that there are times when I'm a little bit too close. And because of that, sometimes it, it distracts me from what the truth of it is. And the punk interview is good. Um, Not only is it good, it's healthy. Okay. And if you are a WWE writer online, I highly encourage you to listen to the punk interview at least once a month, which is something I'm going to do from this point on, because it will bring you back down to earth. It will help temper your opinions. It will help temper your viewpoint. It will help center you as a guy that writes or girl uh, that writes about this company on a consistent basis. Now, I'm not suggesting that it's 
that that company is complete garbage. I'm not suggesting anything of the sort. I'm not saying that you have to go listen to shoot interviews. I'm not saying that you have to bash them or believe that they are the devil or anything like that. But I am suggesting, even if you don't like punk, give the guy a chance to tell his story and listen. And remember that he had nothing to gain by lying in that interview. He wasn't trying to get back in the company. He wasn't trying to get his foot in a New Japan or TNA or anywhere else. He was frustrated. He was upset. And he told things the way he saw them. Now, there's two sides to every story, yes? But when you go listen to the interview, I challenge you to try to understand and try to decipher and try to predict what the WWE side of the story would have been. Because I don't know how they would have had one. That's just me talking. I just don't know how they would have had one. Because I, I think it would have been impossible. Because Punk was very convincing. Now, Punk's a pro wrestler. You know what pro wrestlers do? You guys know, right? Pro wrestlers work you. That's their job. And Punk, at his core, will always be a showman. He will always be, you know, one of those uh, those carnies. You know, a pro wrestler, that, that's his job. Doesn't mean he's not real. It doesn't mean you shouldn't have respect for him. Because I respect Punk highly. But you can always make the comment, Punk's a pro wrestler. You fell for it. You bought in. He sold you a line. He worked you and you fell for it. Okay. <laughs> make you feel better? Fine. Whatever, dude, if that's what you want to believe. So, yeah, you have to temper, again, that word. You have to temper what you believe versus what you know about him and what he was before today and what he will probably always be, and that's an entertainer slash showman slash pro wrestler at heart. Nothing wrong with that. So you can choose to believe him and choose not to believe him, but it raised interesting questions. It raised... Um, some very disturbing issues about WWE and how they operate. And if you're curious what I'm doing right now, I'm going to have some coffee. Watch this. And that's right. I've never had coffee that you could hear on the show. Usually I will pause in between sips and then come back and you're none the wiser. It's a little trick I think I, I, I play on you and, and I never tell you about it. I work you. It's not very hardcore. It's just a simple matter of, Pause and record, pause and record. But I'm parched right now, what can I say? And now my mouth's going to do that thing again. If you guys haven't figured this out by now, this is going to be a very free-form, very loose broadcast. And I'm probably going to do more of these if, if the response is good from you guys. And, and hopefully it is, because so far I'm having fun. Aren't you? Splendid. <laughs> so... Yeah, just again, if you're a WWE writer, if you do it in any capacity, whether it's part-time or full-time or two columns per week or 20 columns per week, I highly advise that you go and you listen and you pay very close attention to the CM Punk podcast with Colt Cabana and you do it at least once a month. I highly advise that you do that because it will help ground you in terms of your opinions, in terms of your views, in terms of your beliefs on what this company is. WWE is a pro wrestling company. It's a pro wrestling company that, and this was something that Scott Hall and Kevin Nash said on a recent Legends with JBL, and they could not have said it better. And it's something that we've all said, but they put it in terms that, that were so grounded and so relatable and so easy to understand. The differences between WCW and WWE was that WCW was a television company producing a wrestling show, and WWE is a wrestling company producing a television show. Two entirely different things. Okay, WWE can polish, you know, spit shine the product all they want to, you know, dress everyone up in suits and ties like they do with Triple H and put them at these great big conference tables and board meetings and what have you. But at the end of the day, it's about a bunch of sweaty dudes and about a bunch of sweaty women in their underwear in the ring, trying to convince you that they're killing each other <laughs> and that they hate each other. And that's what pro wrestling is. And the more you buy into it, the more money they make. And that is what this business is. And Punk said it best. He said it's a, it's a very weird bipolar reality in the world of professional wrestling. We all know that. We all have been aware of that for quite some time. Unless you've been living on a rock for your entire life, you understand that pro wrestling is a work. You understand that what you're seeing may or may not actually be happening in terms of storyline, in terms of what guys feel about each other, this, that, and the other. Okay? When you get hit with the clothesline, it's your job to fall down. 
Okay, a clothesline doesn't knock you down. To anyone out there who doesn't understand how it works, it looks good. Uh, when JBL hit the clothesline from hell, you would look at that and say, well, the guy, you know, he fell, it knocked him down. But, I mean, yeah, is it stiff? Of course it is. But if you don't fall down, you're going to get hurt. You see what I'm saying? Because he's not going to stop swinging that arm. It's your job to fall down and sell it. So it's a cooperative sport. We all know that. And Punk is a pro wrestler at heart. But we cannot forget the sins that this company has been guilty of in the past. So all I'm suggesting to you is that you don't hate on the company. I can't get that word out. Maybe hate is a, is it right? Is it wrong? I mean, it's, it's a big word. You know what I mean? I've got an eight-year-old kid, and I do my best to, to, to not let him say the word hate. It's such a strong word, and it's, so, it's such a passionate word, and it can be so negative, and it can be, it's a, it's, you know, for a four-letter word, it can be very massive and, and very big. And so, okay, sure, I'll say it. If, watch how much you hate on anything, all right? Just my personal advice to you. But, you know, also, if you're going to hate WWE, hate it for the right reasons. Don't hate it because someone told you so. Don't hate it because I told you so. And be sure you're educated on what you're talking about. If you're going to hate punk, hate punk for the right reasons. Hate him because you've educated yourself and you just believe that he was wrong. That now that you have all the facts and you see how that company has treated punk's legacy since he left. And that, to me is very telling, is what does your former employer do when you're out of the picture? Do they just move on and forget that you were there and continue with business as usual? Or do they bring your name up? Do they, you know, sit back and mock you? Do they, you know, stand in front of your hometown in Chicago and say that you were a quitter? That you walked out? That you quit? Well, go back and listen to the show. Because I'm not saying that I'm down and I'm not saying that I'm you know, depressed or stressed out or anything like that. I'm actually in a really good mood right now, to be honest with you. But again, for me, myself personally, it's something I'm going to do at least once a month because I have to temper, you know, my belief system and my opinion system and everything that I feel and know about the business of professional wrestling, especially this company. And there's more pro wrestling companies out there. I'm not saying you, you have to be only a WWE fan. And by the way, I'm also not one of those snobs those indie wrestling snobs who are as guilty of what they accuse everyone else of as you know is what they're doing right now. Indie pro wrestling snobs, if I may soapbox for a moment, I told just random wrestling observations, right? Indie pro wrestling snobs are guilty of sitting back and criticizing hardcore WWE fans and saying, Oh, you watch this WWE, you don't understand pro wrestling. You don't get it. You're a mark. You're a fool. You fall for everything. WWE sucks, and pro and indie pro wrestling is the best. Well, aren't you kind of doing what you think WWE fans are accusing you of? Do you see what I'm saying? It's kind of like an atheist argument against a Christian. It, it's like, <laughs> and believe what you want. I don't care. I'm not going to get political or religious here on you today, but you know, it's whatever your argument is against another group of people whether it's a a race or an organization or a political affiliation, watch how much you criticize because whatever you're accusing them of is kind of what you're doing to them right now. Do you see what I'm saying? And it it works hand in hand. So that's all I'm saying. Try to keep an open mind here, folks. Try to keep an open mind. That's all I'm saying. But, you know, again, here's the bottom line for me on Punk. I miss the guy. I miss him. And, you know, I was talking just now about you know, the indie indie companies and other guys out there and other companies out there, you can enjoy their product. And there's Lucha Underground, there's New Japan. I mean, there's Ring of Honor. I mean, I watch all three. And I'm watching as much wrestling as I possibly can because that's what I do. And, you know, I just... And, and I, I, I just miss Punk. He brought something different to the table. When he talked, it was impossible to not listen. It was impossible to take your eyes off of him. It was impossible to not believe him. Which which is the sign, it's the mark of a true great professional wrestler when he can make you feel, when he can make you believe. When you sit back and you listen to Punk and you watch him, you believed. And it's the same quality that Dusty had, that Rick had, that, 
you know, the greats of this business had was that they made you believe. They made you feel something. And Punk cut so many great promos in his career, not the least of which, of course, was the infamous pipe bomb of on Monday Night Raw. But he did so much great work before then and after. And, you know, he made you believe. And I, I miss that. Daniel Bryan made me believe. And that's what I want. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. There's a lot of pro wrestling writers out there who are jaded. A lot of pro wrestling writers out there who believe they know everything there is to know about the business. They can't learn anything different. And I'm here to tell you that that's crap. Don't believe it. Don't fall for it. Don't read that stuff. Don't read garbage from hacks who think they know everything there is to know about pro wrestling, who, number one, have never set foot in a pro wrestling ring. Number two, have never been in a pro wrestling locker room. Number three, the only pro wrestling they've ever seen is on TV. Now, I'm, can't, I, I'm not saying that you can't be a legitimate pro wrestling writer without ever have, having been in the business, but I'm saying it gives you a different perspective. And if you have never been in the business, but you want to be a pro wrestling writer, be sensible, be logical. Be middle of the road, okay? Be willing to take other people's opinions to heart. Be willing to look at all sides of the argument. Don't just take Punk's side. Look at WWE's side as well. Don't just take WWE's side. Look at Punk's side as well. You see what I'm saying? And don't read garbage from hacks that don't know what they're doing. I, I breezed through a column the other day of someone that I won't mention their name because I don't give free publicity unless it's warranted, and it's not warranted here. But I breezed through the column of someone the other day out of curiosity, and... In one paragraph, the, the writer actually said, if WB was smart, dot, dot, dot. And I'm like, what? Now you're going to tell me what the company should do based on what you think is logical and intelligent. Now, as pro wrestling writers, we all do this. We all tell you how the booking should go, how so-and-so should be portrayed, how the match should end, who should go over. I just wrote... Goldberg should defeat Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series, and he should, and I stick by that. I'm not the booker. I'm not the guy that's going to put ink to paper and make that happen or not happen or whatever. So, yeah, it's an opinion piece, but you have to be willing to look at all sides. That's all I'm saying to you, man. And keep something else in mind when you're talking about WWE, okay? WWE is a pro wrestling company, as we said before. And when you start blindly trusting a pro wrestling promoter, Blindly believing a pro wrestling company, blindly following a pro wrestling organization like a sheep, you're going to end up going over the cliff with that company because they'll take you with them because they will lie to you. They will work you just as much as they do the boys in the back and the girls and the talent and everyone involved. And that's what they do. Okay. So the next time you want to take WWE side against Punk or against Ryback or against Cody Rhodes or whoever the person may be, stop and think for a second that these men and women are, in fact, independent contractors. They're not offered health benefits or health insurance or 401k, that they're, they don't owe this company anything, okay? That contracts can be broken all the time. Just because you put your name on a contract doesn't mean that if you decide to break it that you're a terrible person. It means that maybe something happened to change your mind. Maybe life beckoned and, and caused you to say, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to change. I want to do something better for myself, for my family, for everyone around me. I want to be a better man. I want to be a better woman. And that's what it is. So please, just be sensible. Don't take one guy's side over another. I'm not suggesting that. But what I am saying is when a talent leaves WWE, or TNA, or Ring of Honor, or any of the other company, don't be so quick to rally against them, okay? Because you've not been in their boots. You've not lived the life they've lived. And why in the world would you take the side of a billionaire over a working class guy anyway? <laughs> All you crazy political people out there. Um, by the way, I'm not voting, so keep your hate mail to yourself. I have no dog in this, in this hunt because I have no candidate. And, uh, you know, again, this is a very loose, very free flowing podcast, as I said before, but I can't bring myself to do it. I have to vote my conscience and I've always voted my conscience from day one. My conscience right now says both of these people are complete garbage and I, you can't do it, Tom, don't do it. So I'm not my choice. Okay. And that's how I feel. So again, be very careful. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that 
Punk, at the end of the day, may not end up being a complete liar, and he worked all of us, including myself. Maybe he is, but I, I would rather give him the benefit of the doubt because he's the talent. He's the guy in the ring putting his life on the line. He's not the dude behind the scenes in the suit dictating how things will go. He's not that, you know, that for lack of a better term, that yuppie dunce creative writer behind the scenes who wrote for Friends or who wrote for 24 or whatever the case may be, who's never even watched pro wrestling in his or her entire life. I mean, come on, dude. Grow a brain, all of you. Please, everyone grow a brain if you haven't got one already. And please attempt to look at this thing from a rational perspective. That's all I'm saying to you. All right. Would you like to move on? Because I'm good with it. Let's move on. Let's talk about a few other things that's making the rounds right now. Um, how do we feel right now about the Universal Championship? Because you know who's going after it, right? Roman Reigns is going after it. Now we're going from reality, you know, one man versus a company to one company, you know, heavily promoting a man to the moon and back. Punk even said on Cabana's podcast that he was told numerous times when facing Roman to to make this guy look good, to make him look strong, to do everything in his power to make him look strong. And WWE continues to do that. It's insane to me. And it's it just never ends. And once again, Roman is getting pushed to the top championship. And that in and of itself is it's not shocking. But at the same time, it is indeed amazing to me that this company has not learned its lesson. And, you know, you want to talk about common sense. You want to talk about being middle of the road. You want to talk about, you know, looking at things from a rational perspective. How in the world can you do that when, when you've got this company that just refuses to do any of those things? Roman Reigns, and I'm going to say it again, no matter what you say. Roman Reigns is not the answer. I don't have the answer, and I know that his merch sells before any of you start throwing stones. His merch sells, Tom. I get it. It does. But he's not in the position he's in because he got himself there. He's in the position he's in because they put him there. Now, I don't hold any ill will toward him for that. If if I were coming up in a company, no matter what line of work it was, especially this line of work, I would like a helping hand as well. But I would also like to feel like I'd done something to get there. But here's the thing. It's never going to end. Do you guys understand that? Vincent Mann, in all his infinite wisdom, has decided that this guy is the next big thing. And it's never going to end. How many, how many years is this going now? Two, two and a half? It's going to be three years in 2017 that he's pushed this guy to the moon? It's never going to stop. And now he's going to go back for the Universal Championship again. And I'm going to tell you something, man. As much as I would like to think that cooler heads will eventually prevail... When it comes to the Universal title and Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns, I don't know that they will because I think Roman could end up with the title here. And I, if I would, if I told you that I'm not that I'm I, that I'm not the biggest fan of Owens' Universal title run, that would not be a lie because I'm not. I'm not a major fan of it because it's not a lot to do with him as much as it is. Um, the booking. I, I'm not a fan of the booking. And, you know, I just, again, I look at it and I, 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 in much the same way I look at Roman and I say, well, you know, this is the company doing it. It's not so much him. The whole shtick with him and Jericho is fun. It's entertaining. I have a blast watching it. You just made the list. That's good stuff. It's so funny. And it's so over. And it's working on every level. But again, I just don't understand. I, I don't understand how they can continue um, to go down this road when it doesn't look like, at least for today, right now in this moment, that there's an immediate future in it. The rumors are going around that Jericho is going to be leaving again. And um, if he does, then that then that impacts the storyline because everyone and their brother believed that Jericho was going to face Owens for the Universal title. But now Roman stepped in. Roman's the golden boy of that company, and he has been for a long time, and he is right now. So so here it is. And I, I again, it, it's a matter of opinion. It's a matter of being, you know, the kind of fan you are and, and believing what you want to believe and pulling for who you want to pull for. It's fine. But from my perspective, and I try to take everything into account when it comes to Roman and with Owens, 
but I try to take everything into account when it comes to Roman. From the fact that he was put in this position, he was elevated to this spot, that Vincent Man WB refuses to give up on him. They refuse to do anything different or try anything different or try a heel turn or do anything out of the ordinary or out of the norm for this guy because they truly believe he's the next big thing, that he is their next you know, flag waver, their next standard bearer, that they actually do believe it. That's not nonsense. That's not complete crap. That is truth, okay? And try to understand the hate he's received, which is a lot of it's been unjustified. Fans made their minds up about him during the Daniel Bryan debacle in which Roman, you know, got all this attention and won the Rumble that didn't want him and all this other stuff. And I get that. And I've taken all this into the proper context. I've taken all this under consideration when making the proclamation, and I don't make it easily. But from my perspective, Roman Reigns is not the answer. That's me. Okay, and I didn't say that because I hate the guy. I just, he's not the answer. And you look at me and you say, Tom, things change. People can get better, man. People can improve. And you yourself said, stay middle of the road, stay open to new ideas and, and to different ways of thinking, different opinions. I have. Three years I've stayed open. I was one of the guys when he was with the Shield and they were babyface. I said, dude, he's the next guy. And honestly, I was one of the first ones, to my knowledge, that wrote that opinion. I mean, this is back when JBL's website was still up and running, and I wrote that piece, and I've written several since then uh, in that era about Roman's the next guy. Keep your eyes on him, folks. Dude, I, I my opinion has changed. I don't believe that anymore. You can't get over in one town out of 40 and expect to be called over. That's not how it works, okay? It's not. When you go to 40 different cities and you get booed in 39 of them but cheered in one, that's not getting over as a baby face. It's not working. It's not working. Now, we have to deal with reality. We have to deal with the fact that he's not going to go anywhere. We have to deal with the fact that he's their guy. That barring some unfortunate, uh, serious injury, he's there for the long haul, okay? And we have to deal with that. Everyone does. So you have to take it in stride and just accept things the way they are. Doesn't mean you have to like them because I don't like them. It just doesn't make any sense. I've never in my lifetime that I can recall seen a pro wrestling company have this much evidence stacked up in front of them on a certain talent, on a certain topic, on a certain subject, and yet refuse to change direction, refuse to do anything differently, refuse to look at both sides and make a different call. I can't remember the last time that I've seen this with John. Okay, with Cena. That so many times over the years he could have turned heel and had a, had a momentous run that would have rivaled or perhaps even topped Hollywood Hogan. That's the truth. That's how I feel. But they chose not to do it. Now, it's too late now. No one cares now. I read, I read a piece the other day, or the headline, um, so why John Cena should turn heel. Who cares now? Do you even care about it now? Because I don't. It's over. And even if they brought him back and turned him heel today, it wouldn't matter because he's only there for like a month at a time now. He, you, you, listen, guys, you got what you wanted. You didn't want John there. John's gone now. He's going to come back part-time. He's going to tie Ric Flair's record at WrestleMania. That's my prediction. Wrote that the other day, actually. And I believe that's what's going to happen. But you guys wanted them gone. You got your wish. I mean, that's how it is, Okay. So don't sit back now and talk about how you should be booked or all this other stuff. Okay, fine. I wrote that column too. <laughs> Sorry. But uh, yeah, you had your chance, man. We all did, right? So uh, yeah. So, so get off it. Calm yourself because it's not worth losing any sleep over. It is what it is. All right. But again, when it comes to Roman, this stuff's happening. And I'll tell you something. He's got fans. They're all female. <laughs> There's a few dudes out there. Stop being so blind. That's all I'm saying to you. Try to consider the possibility that you're wrong. Okay? Try to consider the possibility that you're wrong. That he doesn't have it. That he's not the answer. That he's not the guy. Okay? Just try to consider that there's someone else, either not there now, but is that will be there and is bankable and can be used in the right way and can be booked in the proper spots and make it happen where 
you know, Roman is incapable of making it happen, consider the possibility that you're wrong. I have. I've considered the possibility that I'm wrong. I've considered the possibility that I'm wrong, that he is the top guy, and that he's not the top guy. I've considered. I've thought. I've analyzed. I've studied. I've watched. I've listened. More importantly, I have listened. The next time you want to pull for Roman and you believe Roman is the greatest thing since sliced bread, I want you to just close your eyes, stop looking at how glorious he is and how beautiful he is or whatever, and listen to the crowd. The crowd will dictate what happens. And I understand that people want to talk about, oh, well, the crowd online is so much different than the crowd in the live arenas. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay? There's haters out there. I get it. There's critics out there. I understand. But, but dude, people in the live crowds decided a long time ago. Roma could look at them with the mic in his hand and say, why do you hate me so much? I'm trying to feed my family here. I got a wife. I got a beautiful daughter. I love my family. Don't you guys love your kids? Don't you want more for your kids? Don't you want your kids to grow up with the, believing that you're a hero? Dad's out there. Don't you want your son or your daughter believing that that you're, you're the hero that they've always seen in comic books? That's what I am to my kid. So you can hate me if you want to, but I'm doing this for my family. No, it wouldn't, it wouldn't matter because he could get popped. He could get a pop right then in that promo. But the next week on Raw, he's getting booed out of the building. And that's how it is. Because he can't make a lasting impression that is positive in any way. And that's the truth. And if you don't believe me, then look over the past three years and show me a moment where I'm wrong. Now, they've had they've had opportunities to allow him to capitalize on positive things he's done. I'm not saying that they haven't or that you know they have or whatever, but it's not happened. Okay? He continues to be, you know, left on the fringes here, but yet pushed into your face as the next top guy. They're not going to give it up. So now you have United States heavyweight champion Roman Reigns going to be facing more than likely WWE Universal champion Kevin Owens. And I'm assuming it will be Survivor Series when this all goes down. And, you know, belt for belt. So Roman could actually walk out of that thing with two championships. And isn't that funny how Goldberg was United States champion and then became WCW champion and had two titles? Isn't that funny? <laughs> I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. So, But again, um, it, it, it defies logic. It defies understanding. But here's my question. What if, in fact, they don't have anyone else that can do this? Let's all stop to consider the fact that maybe Roman is indeed the guy. And that yours truly is wrong, like so many other people are wrong. How many years do you need to get established? Honestly. I'm not saying there's a formula. I'm not saying there's a time limit. But what if we're still talking about this a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, four years from now? What if we're all still talking about, remember all those writers and podcasters back in 2014 that were saying this wasn't working? Maybe those guys were right. (laughs) <laughs> I'm just saying, man, uh, what, if, what if we're right? What if this is just never going to work? You have to be able to roll with the punches as a pro wrestling company. WWE's done it before. They changed horses midstream when they needed to in order to get a guy over or to, to change things up to make things work for a guy. And, um, you know, why they refuse to make it happen now I just, I don't understand. I don't understand. I never got it. I don't get it to this day. And I just, you know, that that goes back to my frustration with this company is that I see things and no, I never claim to know it all. And no, I don't believe that I'm I'm the, you know, the, the guru here or anything like that. But I just don't understand, again, why things can't be different. I don't understand why things can't um, change and why they this company can't you know, roll with the punches, as I said before. And I just, I don't get it. I don't get any of it. (laughs) It's frustrating. You guys can tell, right? I've written about Roman a lot. Just so you know, I've written about Roman a lot. I've written about Owens, but I've written about Roman more than I have anybody else, with the exception of probably John Cena and the women and Punk. And those are the top people I've written about. I've written about Brock quite a bit in the past couple of years. But 
that's kind of where I'm at right now. And again, you got to consider every 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 side, every viewpoint, and look at every opportunity that that he's had and that that company's had to get over, to get him over. And it's just, I'm sorry, it's just not. That's just that's it. So, what else have we got to talk about? Um, what about the WWE World Heavyweight Championship? We talked about the Universal Title just a little bit. What about the WWE World Heavyweight Championship? How are we feeling about James Ellsworth? Someone pitched the idea to me that perhaps Ellsworth is being inserted into the storyline for when Dean turns heel. Because for Dean to turn heel, he has to, you know, attack him that'll get the sympathetic cheer, and that would be Ellsworth. But I'm not sure how I'm feeling about that. Ellsworth, it feels like he's gumming up the works just a little bit. And I like him on a personal level. I think that he's living the dream. And good on him. But I just don't know where they're going with this. I wish I could predict it. I could. I could try. Um, a Dean Ambrose heel turn. But if that happens, then you have to replace Ambrose with a top face. Orton probably. And by the way, if you believe that Orton... If you really believe that Orton is joining the Wyatt family, you've lost your mind. He's the Viper. He's the Viper, Randy Orton. He plays head games. He plays mind games. That's what he's doing. You guys know that, right? He's playing mind games on Bray. He's trying to trick Bray. And by the way, if you're Bray Wyatt, why would you continue to fall for this? <laughs> you fell for it with Daniel Bryan. Why would you fall for it with Randy? I'm going to tell you guys right now, and this is going away from the WWE Championship for a minute, but just hear me out. Of all the people in that company that's ready to make a massive impact, it's Bray Wyatt. You put Bray Wyatt in New Japan with this gimmick that he has right now, and with the fan following he has right now, he'd be main eventing Tokyo Dome with Okada. I believe that. And he should. And I believe that the the potential, the possibility is there for him to do this in WWE. But they're not going to let it happen. Because they've decided a long time ago the hole that they want him left in. And that's the hole he's in right now. He's up to his neck in it. And he's not getting out. And that's how they want it. And and I, I look at this and I'm just, I'm puzzled, I'm baffled beyond all words. He's the next great character, babyface. And he has been for a long time. And he's not being utilized to his full potential. And man, have I written that column a whole bunch in the past two years. He's not being utilized to his full potential. I've written, written it for every website that I write for, including my own blog. I've podcasted about it. I've talked about it with friends. I've done everything in my power to help promote this guy and get him over. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't need my help. He's over already. Do you know what I mean? But it just I don't understand why they leave him in this flux, this constant flux of, well, we need a heel. We need a bad guy for this spot. You're the bad guy. And he's like, um, have you listened to the crowds? And by the way, WWE's insistence on focusing on how many people follow Bray, but then yet Bray never wins. He's never elevated beyond his station. That's got to be one of the most ridiculous slash hilarious slash sad things I've ever seen as a pro wrestling fan. How in you gonna in one side of the equation you talk about how over a guy is, but on the other side you don't do anything with him. That's talking out of both sides of your mouth. That's pathetic, in my opinion. This company I'm going to say they don't know what they have. They know what they have. They just don't want him. And I think Bray fills a spot. And I think that if Bray went to management today and said, I think I'm done, I'm going to write out the rest of my contract and I want my release, they'd give it to him. And I don't think they'd do anything trying to keep him. And I love Bray. And I don't think any less of him as a performer. I think he's one of the best they have. He's the He's by far the best character they have. He has been for a long time. By far the best character they have. Okay? But, again, they're doing nothing with him. And they've they've not proven to me, or to Bray, more importantly, or to anyone else involved with the situation or that watches the product, that they're going to do anything, that they have anything to do with Bray. They have any plans for him other than, okay, Bray, here's your feud. You're going to lose. And here's what you're going to do two months from now when we put you back on TV, and you're going to lose. And then you're going to... Really? That's all you got for him? You helped create this guy. And now you're going to leave him, as I said, in a constant state of flux. I don't get that. I, I'm just, I'm, 
I'm baffled by it. He's the next great character baby face. You put him in the ring, and I've always said that it needs to be against Triple H, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. But you need to turn him on a powerful heel. You need to turn him on a real powerful heel. And I would love to see Bray Wyatt versus AJ Styles with the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. That's just me. Of course, I'm the same guy that believes that when it's time for the New Day to kind of branch off. And I don't think they'll split. I think they'll just start, a, start working independently of each other. I think Big E versus Kevin Owens for the Universal Championship would be match made in heaven. And I think that thing would be entertaining and get over. And I think it would be great to watch and fun to watch, too. That's just me. I'm not the head booker here. You guys know that. But I just know what I like. I know what I see. And I know what, what I think to be true. And um, that's how it is. Um, let's switch gears a little bit. I, I mentioned New Japan earlier. If you folks do not have Access TV, Access, 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 Access TV, you got to get it. If it's available for you to get, you got to get it because it's so good because you get to watch New Japan every Friday. I've watched so much New Japan. Everyone around me is sick of me watching it. That's the truth. Oh my God, it's so much fun. Ishii, Shibata, uh, Hiroki Goto, um, Naito, of course, uh, Okada, as I said before, Tanahashi, Bullet Club, eh, you know, take it or leave it. I'm sorry, I'm not one of those Bullet Club guys. I'm just not. I, I, you know, do your own thing. Do your own thing. You can do things out of a tribute to another group, but when you're using the hand symbols and the same irreverent attitude. It's just a mocking of what was done before. Of course, this comes from the guy that called this podcast RWO. So, <laughs> right? Mocking. Ripping off. But um, I love me some New Japan. I love the fact that in New Japan, all the guys, they each have their own thing. They each have their own thing. They're all known for a certain thing. And you can you can differentiate them one from the other. All you need to do is watch one hour of New Japan and see as much... Let's say New Japan ran an hour of TV, ran 20 guys in that hour with no commercial breaks. By the end of the hour, you would know what each guy... You may not remember their names as you would any pro wrestling promotion that you watch for a straight hour that you've never seen before or whatever, or that you're just vaguely familiar with. But you would know at the end of the hour that by the time you watch it again, okay, he's this guy, he's that guy, you know. Um, Shibata is the throwback to Antonio Inoki. Um, he, he's tough as nails, but he's very, he's got the black boots, the black trunks like Austin. He's all business. You got Ishii, he's a stone pit bull. You know, he, he's a piece of steel. Um, he, he, it, it, try taking this guy off, off his feet. See how far you get. Bash him in the face as much as you want. He wants you to do it more. He's hardcore. Okay. Tanahashi. Um, once in a lifetime talent. He's their guy. He's their John Cena, as Jim Ross has said so many times in the past. To beat him is to make a statement. That means you're rising up. Okada, the rainmaker, the future. He's the guy. He's his best years are ahead of them. Uh, are ahead of him. You know, and uh, Naito, he disrespects authority. He doesn't like to be told what to do. He does things the way he wants to. He plays mind games. See, each guy has their own thing, and they don't deviate from that. You don't have to worry one week to the next if the if the t-shirt's going to change, if it's going to be, well, he said this last week, why would he behave this way this week? Doesn't make any sense. See what I'm saying? You essentially have a company full of John Cena's in as much as each guy knows what works for him and he sticks with it. Okay? And that's what the company is allowing to happen. Now, I'm not saying that the company's perfect. You know, you've got a lot of those Ring of Honor guys going back and forth and they hit, you know... 15 finishers in a row and they each one kick out and they each jump back up as if they never got touched because they don't sell enough. That kind of stuff frustrates me and bothers me to no end. But in terms of what they're doing overall as a company, I can appreciate and respect it. So again, if you have the opportunity to watch some New Japan, you need to watch it because it's good stuff. And I'm very close to getting the the New Japan um, New Japan World. Uh, I just I wish they had a better app for iPhone um, cause what I've, I've done some research and it's not very impressive so far, but you know, it's something I, I, I really want to check out. It's 10 bucks a month like WWE Network is. So I think I'm going to give it a shot and see what happens. Cause there's no like long-term commitment to it, but you know, I'm looking forward to it. So I'm looking forward to checking it out. So as soon as I do, I'll let you guys know if it's worth it or not. How about that? But yeah, I highly recommend doing it. I'm just now starting to get some ring of honor happening. And start watching some Ring of Honor religiously. I love the Briscoes. My God, I love the Briscoes. Mark and Jay. Jesus. 
I, I can't about the curse. I'm getting so <laughs> happy. I'm giddy with uh, uh, the the Briscoes. These guys, the fact that they may never work a match in a WWE is a sin. It's a sin. It's a travesty. Um, it's an erroneous error in judgment, and and it's it should never be this way. This should not be re- our reality. Our reality should be the Briscoes have been in WWE for the past five years, and they're tearing it up. That they've broken records. They are surpassing the Dudley Boys in terms of what WWE claims is the greatest tag team of all time. That they are amazing to watch. That you know Jay Briscoe is, has had a massive heel run. That Mark Briscoe has become one of the great character baby faces of all time. And I firmly believe both these guys are capable of truly, truly great things in WWE if they were just given the opportunity to get there and to flex their muscles and show what they can do creatively. They had a chance several years ago. They were told no. One of the most infamous promos of all time. You know, Jay Youngblood... Jay Youngblood, excuse me. I'm still watching WCW or uh, NWA, excuse me, on the WWE Network right now. So I'm watching the uh, 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 Jay Youngblood. So my apologies. But uh, Jay Briscoe, excuse me. Um, Jay Briscoe cut the uh, the uh, uh, infamous promo in which he he said that John Laurinaitis believed that the, the Briscoes were not cosmetically pleasing enough. And it's it's great. Go look it up. It's awesome stuff. It's very captivating. I defy you to be able to take your eyes off of Jay Youngblood when the guy has a mic in his hand. Good luck to you. I don't think you can do it. Nobody can do it. It's amazing stuff. He's one of the best of all time. He truly is. And here's what I'm saying about this whole thing. Is that you've got two great, a a great tag team. Uh, You know, Mark Briscoe's come such a long way in terms of his character and how he's presented and how he's, he's in full control of himself and J and Jay is too. And, and I've, I've written about these guys before and I've, you know, debated friends and other writers. And I, I've always had one of the opinions put to me was that the Briscoes were too rated R that they, they couldn't conform. They couldn't do this. They couldn't be kid friendly. Do me a favor. Next opportunity you have go up, personally to a pro wrestler and tell him he can't do something do that for me do that for me and see how quick you get punched in the mouth especially if it's from jay briscoe it, it, it's a challenge do you understand do you guys know that it's a challenge to tell a pro wrestler he can't do something that's nonsense i believe that the briscoes would love the opportunity to prove people wrong i think they live to prove people wrong I think that if you if WWE were to ever bring them in, I'm not talking about NXT, I'm talking about the main roster now, that if WWE ever were to bring these guys in and they told Jay Briscoe, go out and cut a 10-minute promo, don't swear one time, you think Jay would say, F that, man, I can't do that. You know, get out of here with that. And then walk up. No. You know what he's going to say? Give him the mic, I'll do it. Because it's a challenge. Because these guys know how to get heat or they know how to get over. And they know how to do both extremely well. Okay? They know how to get that pop. They know how to get out there and they know how to make you feel it. And they know how to connect to their fans and thereby connect to the entire crowd. It's what they do. Don't tell me they're incapable of doing it. Don't tell me it can't be done because I don't believe that. Uh, again, a travesty at the Briscoes and they're performing the WWE ring. And I, I think it's it's beyond ridiculous, and I think it needs to change. And I would love to see them get an opportunity at some point to go to WWE. And, and again, the indie wrestling snobs, and you know who you are out there. You're the same guys that call Dean Ambrose John Moxley. It's John Moxley. And my, my Twitter handles the combination of Mox and Ambrose and Roman because I'm a Mark. Guess what? It's okay to be a Mark. I'm a Mark as well. We're all Marks. You want to know why? Mark is a pro wrestling fan. So it's okay to call yourself that. If you want to call yourself that, go go for it. Because that's what you are. You're a fan. You're we're all fans. I get that. And I'm a fan of guys myself and girls. I am. But, you know, again, indie wrestling snobs. You, you guys, you, you're a rare breed. You're a special breed. You're unique in and of yourselves. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, you know, again, consider the possibility that, that you're wrong about something. But indie wrestling snobs will look at you and they'll they'll talk about the Briscoes and they'll say, well, they shouldn't go to WWE, blah, blah, blah. And 
don't you think that these two guys would love to have the opportunity to get some of Vince McMahon's money? I mean, don't you think their talents deserve the worldwide stage of World Wrestling Entertainment? Don't you think they deserve the chance to be set to bank more money than they've ever seen in their lifetimes? If you really appreciate them and respect them as much as you do, wouldn't you like to see that happen? Because, dude, at the end of the day, it's not about what you think their characters should be. It's not about what you think should happen to them creatively. It's about these guys as actual people outside the ring. Wrestling's a payday. Do you understand? Independent contractors means you're there to make money. You're there to make money. You're there to get paid. You're there to get a paycheck. You got to provide for your family. These guys don't have the kind of jobs that you and I have. They actually have to go out and put their lives on the line physically. And and unless you, you know, work on a boat and, and catch crab or unless you uh, uh, are working with a power company and you climb poles, unless you're dealing with something that could physically kill you, then you don't have a, a dangerous job, okay? And these guys, their, their window to earn money and earn at a very high level is extremely is extremely small. The window is small to get in, to learn the game, to get over, to make a ton of money, and then get out before you can't walk anymore. The window is very small. It's very narrow. Okay? So they want to get paid. And I don't begrudge them a penny of their money. None of them. Including guys like Nash who have always been criticized for it. Yeah, I want to see him get paid. Including Punk. Absolutely. Pro wrestling is about getting paid. To all of you bleeding hearts out there and all you guys that want to romance this business, like, oh, it's it's the history. It is. It is history. I'm the old school guy. I love NWA. It is the history. It is Dusty versus Rick. It is the Horseman and Midnight Express. And it is Rock and Roll Express. And it is Wahoo. And it is Nikita. It is Ivan. It is all that stuff. It is old school Randy Savage. It is Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. It is. And I love the history as much as everyone else does. But guess what all those guys had in common, folks? They wanted to get paid. Okay? Do you honestly believe they all got into it for the love and respect and history? Okay, sure. But once you get in, you learn very quickly, I have to get in. I have to speak up for myself. I have to work hard to get myself over. Because the guys that get over get paid. The guys that draw houses get paid. I got to be that guy. Do you understand? There's no shame in a guy wanting to get paid. So don't sit back and begrudge the, the Briscoes for wanting to take a WWE paycheck. I want them to take one. I want them to get to WWE and have, I don't know how many years, three, maybe three to four, something like that, two to four maybe, and get over like no one's business because I firmly believe they can. I know they can. Don't sit back and tell me they can't. They, they're not. Please, stop that noise. You got to think about what you're talking about, man. You're talking about pros. The Briscoes are pros. They know how to get over. Of course they could. I soapboxed for almost an hour now. Isn't that something? <laughs> well, look, man, I usually try to stick to an hour, sometimes less. So we're going to do that. Okay. And I got more stuff to say, but you know what? It's my show and I can always come back and do another one. And I will. This has been episode number 64, the Random Wrestling Observations with yours truly, the aforementioned Tom Clark. So real quick, a rundown of where you can find me. I'm always on Bleacher Report, been there six years strong. Thank you to the fine folks at Bleacher. I'm still having a blast. I'm a WWE feature columnist there. Love that gig. I'm also available on Sports Kita, Camel Clutch blog. If you'd like to check me out, look at my own blog, tomclarkbr.wix.com slash blog. Um, check out a production company that good friend Kyle Smith and myself own that produces all the material you're listening to and that you read from yours truly. Boing Studios. Follow us on Twitter at Boing Studios. Check us out on Facebook at Boing Studios. You can uh, also check out the Boing Studios website, tomclarkbr.wix.com slash boink. Yes, we need to update it. Don't give me a hard time. I'm doing the best I can here. I'm one guy. So, <laughs> um, If you like the music that you hear on this show, and by the way, you can hear it on two other podcasts that we run, Tom and Kyle's Comedy Action Hour and Tom Clark's 30-Minute Fun Show. The music produced on all three of these programs is done by a guy named Philip Fender. We call him Goose. Goose uh, is available for freelance work, as is Kyle, who did all the artwork that you see on the Boink Studios website. Anything that's related to the Boink Studios logo or to our likenesses has been done by Kyle himself. So both Kyle and Goose are available for freelance work. Give us a shout-out. Give us an email, boinkstudiosyahoo.com. 
We'll hook you up with contact information. These guys love to do some work for you, whether it's for your podcast or for your website or whatever the case may be. Give us a buzz. And uh, listen, man, thanks for checking us out. We really do appreciate it. It's been a blast talking to you. We're going to come back and do it again real soon. Again, I have to thank everybody out there for your support, for everyone that listens, for everyone that reaches out and emails me and tweets at me and texts me and direct message me and everyone out there that uh, keeps giving me good, positive vibes. I appreciate it. And to all the critics out there, keep doing what you do. Keep hating. Haters going to hate, I guess, as the kids say. Or something like that. I'm not very hip. But uh, <laughs> do what you do, man. It's cool. But yeah. And uh, like I said, man, we appreciate your business. And we look forward to seeing you again. So come back again real soon and check us out real soon again here on Tom Clark's Main Event.